Okay, hello everyone. Well, this is your uh, first lecture uh, for this um, Outlab um, coding uh, record. Um, I have decided to actually put up this uh, co uh, coding lab um, on the internet so the student can actually follow the instructions here and trying to pick up the um, coding uh, uh, on your own pace. Uh, the reason is because, well, we probably not going to have all the time to cover um, all the coding questions in the class. So we are going to put this up online so students can actually watch it whenever they have the free time. But first of all, well, let me um, go over one more time. Um, um, I think people who are taking uh, the class already have the repository download from GitHub. Um, you already have the working directory set on your desktop. Um, if you are running this uh, code um, on your desktop uh, uh, folder, um, it will be very easy to basically just double click the, uh, the files uh, in the repository uh, folders. So first of all, well, this is a, a lecture one. So uh, we have the introductory to R part one right here. So uh, what we're going to go through today, it's uh, basically something very basic. Um, it's, it's basically um, the, the, uh, the fundamental use of um, the program's R. So uh, there are some uh, fundamental uh, uh, commands and functions that you might want to know before you actually getting started on um, your assignments or projects in the future. Well, first of all, um, there are a couple of things that we have already talk, talked about uh, in the class. So uh, we will go through this uh, 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 code uh, line by line. So um, if we are going to uh, have um, about uh, five to 10 minutes um, of the videos um, done and we will put the second half to a different um, uh, uh, set of videos for you to finish the whole um, coverage of this uh, basic line of codes. So first of all, um, in, the, in the class, we already went over. Uh, if you want to actually uh, start your project, you always want to know where you, your current working directory is. So um, basically, in terms of computer, um, when you're using window or maybe when you're using MacBook, uh, it basically means that well you want to find out well where did you put your files um, in 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 your in your in your computer like what which folder it is. So directory it's basically uh, refer to the folders usually that you use um, in a window. Um, of course, you can actually put several folders within the folders, so it will create multi layers of directory. Um, so that's why I actually suggest people to actually download the repository folder to your desktop so that you can actually easily find um, the, uh, the codes and also the data for uh, running the code. So here, this is the lines that I already commented and said, well, find out where your working directory is. So if you basically um, type out GET WD parenthesis, um, get work directory. Uh, it's a function, so it has a parentheses. And you run this line by um, pressing Control, Enter. As you can see, well, the output window here will tell you where is this current directory you are working on. So this uh, file right here, this script right here, this project that you are doing, it's currently running in this directory here. So it's in C drive, right? so um, some folders, right? and um, basically this is the folder where you put your file here. <laughs> well, just in case, if you want to actually change the working directory, let's say you are starting a new project and you want to actually um, uh, uh, set this project in a different working directory, you can also set working directory by using the functions set wd and put in the parentheses. And within the parentheses, very important, you have to use a single quote or double quotes to uh, basically define your path. So usually you can define your path in a certain way. So for example, you know you want to save something in your C drive. 
and you want to actually save it in let's say uh, under user and let's say under user you have a certain name let's say you have an account that says Peter I don't know if this is your path but I'm just giving you some idea and within this directory of Peter you might actually have a document well, a folder a directory and then well so on and on you can actually continue to type it out and what happened is well after you finish your path you can actually run this code line and it will set your directory to this locations that you define in your computer so that you can actually have everything saved it and uh, work under this directory well another very important uh, functions that you have to know it's update our packages um, this command here basically allow R to actually check all your current packages all your libraries um, to see if they are actually up to date um, if there are some packages that you downloaded before to your machines but you haven't updated uh, for a very very long time you might actually want to update them in your machines the reason is because um, there are some code that we use in this class that might actually use uh, the most current versions of those packages so the syntax might be slightly different it could be i'm not saying that well they has to be different but um, sometime it could be different so again well once you run this lines control enter it, um, r is going to run everything for you and trying to find out what are the updates programs and which are the ones that it's not updated so if they going to uh, uh, ask you to do the update uh, in most cases I will say well just try to get everything up to date so that you can actually get the most updated versions and uh, run the codes with uh, out any uh, problems so I'm gonna basically cancel this uh, checkout right here uh, because we want to continue well there are some people who want to actually create a new um, our script files uh, by basically using this line of code so if you are trying to uh, create a new uh, files to your folder what you can do is basically using this function file.edit use a, uh, 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 the, uh, the soft brackets and make sure again because you are defining a string the name of your files so you have to make sure that you are putting a code here either a single code or double code will work so let's say well you want to actually create a file called practice.r this is basically a new file so once I write uh, run this code as you can see it will create a new script files right here which is empty but it has a name practice.r and what you can see also here is if you go to your directory this current working directory you can see that the new created file it's already created here so basically this is an, uh, a way how you can actually create new files and trying to uh, create a new project script uh, for your uh, future assignments or maybe um, your um, project files to be honest it's it rarely uh, rarely the case that you might actually use this command um, file.edit um, to create a new file but um, it's just an alternative way because usually you can actually just create a new empty script by clicking the add button right here our script so that you can actually have an untitled script file here and you can actually later save it to your current working directory well, going back to the uh, uh, original file here so we have um, this line right here um, I said if you want to clear all the environment variables well you can actually use this remove functions so our M basically refer to remove so it remove everything from your global environment so for example let's say well I have a functions here that I want to create a vector of elements just like how we talk about in the class we can actually store this three elements a list of elements into this variable x so by running the codes here 
as you can see, I'm actually creating a global environment variable here, which is x. And this variable actually stores three values, 2, 7, and 5. It's a 1 by 3 matrix. As you can see, the dimensions of the matrix here. And if you say, hey, you know what? I actually do not want to save this x variable. I want to remove it. You can now run this code right here, remove anything in the list equals to ls, which is the list functions. So once you run this functions, as you can see, everything is clear here. Of course, um, there are many, many functions that we are going to use, but if you are not sure about how, what the functions actually mean and what does it do, well, you can always ask how to define for you. Well, the way how we want to ask for help to define a function, it's basically using this query tools, the question mark. So what you can do here is basically put a question mark before any function name. Let's say we have a function name called SQL. So this is basically a function that creates a sequence of numbers. So let's say, well, I'm not so sure about what this does. So you can try to run this code right here. And R will automatically understand what you're asking for and bring you to this help sections. And in this help section, it basically tells you what this SDQ functions actually do. So sequence generations. So this sequence generation basically help us to generate a sequence of number. So it also tells you what are the parameters that you have to pass in in these functions so that you can actually get what you want. We are going to use a lot of different uh, functions defined in R because, well, it's someone already written the codes in the background. So we're basically just taking advantage of this. But before you're using them, at least you might want to actually understand how to use them and how to define those parameters to be used in these functions. So this question mark is going to be your lifesavers throughout the times of this course. Now, let's say, well, I kind of getting a sense of how this sequence generation functions actually work. So I'm going to basically give you an example how we create a series of number. So unlike this C function here that creates a vector of elements, but this sequence functions here also can be stored into a variable, let's say y. And now what we are passing in to this function is this sequence generation function will take the parameter from what number to whatever number that is you define and incremented by how much within this sequence. So in this case, what we're defining here is we want to create a sequence from the number four and to the number 10. And we want this sequence to increment it by the value of one. So let's see what it does. Let's run this code. Now this whole thing, it's now stored in a global variable called y, as you can see y right here. If you want to know what y is, you can actually run this line right here, and this will tell you the values of y. And as you can see, we are creating a list of number, a vector of numbers that has value of 4 beginning with, go all the way until the value of 10. And each element within this list, it's incremented by the value of 1. Now, it's very important for you guys to note, if we are defining the number 4 to 10, and you actually see this appear in this list of number, that means when we are coding in R, this values in this 
functions are what we call inclusive. So you actually see those number included in the final outcomes. Unlike some other programming language like Python, sometimes when you're defining a range of number, there might be some functions that you don't actually see the number to be inclusive. So it's very, very important when you first learn R to understand the logics of these functions. Well, here, I want to actually create a sequence starting at 4 and incremented by 5. And in this case, we are not defining the n number here, but we can pass in an other variable here or um, parameter here. And we want the functions to take the incremented by 5 and take three steps. Now, what we did here is using a functions again create a sequence of number and this functions will take the parameter here from the value of 4 and the length here it's basically the steps will have a length of 3 it will jump 3 times and each jump each step will be jumped by a value of 5 so let's see what happens once I put into this uh, uh, functions, run this functions, as you can see, it's stored into a global variable of y, which is exactly what we defined last time. But as you can see, now y is being replaced by this new line of codes. So we do not see this y that would be defined by the value of 4 to 10 and increment by that incremented by one we're actually seeing it being replaced by this line right here well if you are not computer science major and it's first time you are doing coding on uh, in any programming language you should have notes computer only reads the code line by lines and from the top to the bottom anything that runs at the bottom will replace whatever that runs in the top so you actually need to keep track of what are the global environment that you have created in the past. And do you want to keep them? Do you want to use them over and over again? Or do you want to create a new ones that it's not going to uh, confuse you later to use? So here, let me see what why I'm creating here. So comparing to the previous, we have a number starting at four. And it will increment it by five units, which is the next number will be nine. So this is the second number that we have. So we are actually have the first steps and then to the second steps. Now the next step, the final step here, it's from nine jump to 14, which is by five units. And this is now the first step. As you can see, this vector here actually contain three values. So the length, of this vector it's three well creating a sequence or creating a vector it's basically the most fundamental things to do in any programming not only just for R. so hopefully this will help you a little bit uh, to understand how we create a vector of numbers well at this point i would like to save the mathematical operations for the next video I don't want to make this video too long, but I want to keep it short, as short as possible, so you guys can actually digest them. So I will see you in the next video.